Hey guys, welcome to another class with me, Sean Helene. And today I wanted to share with you a little bit of the work that I've been doing in response to the current times, which is an ongoing pandemic. Where I live, we're in a shelter in place, meaning we're not really allowed to leave our house except to go get groceries or medicine. So this has all been very stressful um, and a little depressing. So this is gonna be a class that's nice and gentle. And it will require a lot more props than my other classes. You'll need two blocks, a strap, um, maybe a blanket, but definitely a bolster. And we'll end with some breath work. So it'll hopefully calm you down from whatever heightened state that you're in right now. So let's get started. You're gonna begin with your strap. And this is often called the Supta Padangustasana hammock. And it's a really nice way to just kind of passively open the hamstrings and the back of the neck. So the length of your loop in your strap is going to be dependent on how long your legs are and how flexible your hamstrings are. One end of the loop is going to go right behind the back of your skull right above your ears, and then the other end of the loop is going to go around your foot. So when I lie down and I put my foot in the strap, you want the head a little bit off the ground, not too much that you're not yanking on the back of the neck. And there's a slight drop of the chin pulling back and down. Now if you're a little more flexible and you want to feel a stretch in your hamstrings, you can tighten your loop. <clears throat> Or if it's too intense, you can make your loop bigger. If it's as big as it possibly can go and it's still in too, too intense, you can just bend the knee a little bit. So in a restorative pose like this, you're not trying to go for the maximum, absolute, deepest stretch that you can. You want more kind of a passive experience. And so what you're looking for again here, a bit of a stretch in the back of the hamstring, Maybe a bit of a stretch in the back of the neck. Make sure that the strap hasn't slid too low so that your chin is pulling up and your neck is snapping back. Or that your chin is being pulled down too much and you're cranking the back of the neck. You'll know when you've found the sweet spot because it'll feel quite delightful, this one. I'm going to tighten my loop just a little bit more. And so unlike a lot of the more active Hatha Yoga poses here, this is much more about just releasing the weight of your body into the strap, into the floor. You're not trying to engage muscularly. And if the eyes close, the eyes close. If they don't, just keep the eyes kind of very softly open, meaning you're not trying to look at anything in specific or darting your eyes side to side. from here to switch sides, just pick your right leg up, put your right foot into the strap carefully, and then slowly release the left leg down to the ground. Here you might notice the difference between your legs in terms of the length of the hamstrings. So if you feel like this side is significantly tighter, you might want to loosen or vice versa. Again, you're not trying to push your head back. You're trying to let the weight of the foot and the head moving in opposition to each other create kind of a balance so that neither are working. Each are passively relaxing. find yourself getting bored or stressed, you can just kind of 
focus on your breath. And unlike a lot of teachers out there, I don't prescribe or suggest ujjayi breath while you're practicing. I can go over that in another video. Just follow the breath as it naturally flows. If you find it to be rapid in nature, try to slow it down a little bit. And from here, go ahead and slowly release the belt. Move it off to your side. We'll stay on our backs for a few moments. Bend your knees. Place your feet to the floor. Cross your left ankle over your right thigh. And just reach up and hold the back of your right thigh for thread the needle pose. You can always intensify this pose by holding the front of the shin. And if your arms are short and or your hips are tight, you can just use your strap to hold the back of the thigh instead of using your hands. A lot of the times people will pull up their head and their shoulders to be able to hold the thigh and then can't lie back down and it's a really unpleasant experience. It's better just to use your strap in that case. And then switch sides. Again, like I alluded to at the beginning of class, there'll be uh, much less instruction than normal. There'll be just kind of more of a, a passive experience, a grounding experience. Again, as you come to thread the needle, work either the front of the back of the front of the back of the thigh, or front of the calf. Try to take the same one you did on the first side. Then go back to the first side again. Cross your left ankle over your right thigh. This time, instead of holding behind your right thigh, just release your right foot to the ground. Lift your butt, scooch it a couple of inches over to your left, and then drop both of your knees over to the right. So you're kind of coming into a twisted variation. Take your arms out to a T, push both palms into the floor as leverage, and twist your belly and chest and gaze over towards your left hand. Then inhale, come back to center. Switch sides, cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Place your left foot on the floor. Scoot your butt a few inches to the right first. Then just let everything drop over to your left. And then as you exhale, I like to use my hands here to push into the floor to help turn everything from the abdomen to your skull over to the right. This is a, a more gentle version of eagle leg twist. And then slowly come back to the center. Now just roll over onto your side, come up onto your hands and your knees. Tabletop position. Make sure your hips are stacked over your knees, shoulders are stacked over your wrists, and as you inhale, look up and lift your butt for cow pose. Exhale, round your back, and come into cat pose. Inhale, arch, look up, cat, or cow, and then exhale, round in to cat, push. Two more, inhale, and exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Now come back to center. And now we're gonna do a little bit of a different variation of cat cow. I want you to kind of push your ribs over to your right and shrug your right shoulder into your right ear. So you're kind of creating a bow with your right side waist. <clears throat> Now, as you bow over to the right, let your left elbow even bend a little bit. Then come back to center, bow your rib cage over to the left, move your hips over to the left, bend your right elbow a little bit. 
Again, side to side, come back to the center. Hips, ribs go to the right, bend your left elbow. Then back to the middle, hips, ribs over to the left, and bend your right elbow. Try to even pull your left shoulder into your ear. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale to a cow pose, round it again. Inhale, back to a cat. Oh, I got those backwards. I forget what cats and cows do. Now from here, I'm gonna use blocks at this stage. You don't have to at home, just to make it a little bit nicer. From here, I want you to just step your right foot forward into a lunge. You can pad your left knee as needed. I'm gonna take my blocks to the highest setting. Push your blocks down, lengthen your chest forward and up. And unlike how I often teach this pose, I want you to point your back toes and let your hips drop forward and down. As you drop your hips forward and down, press your hands firmly into the blocks and try to lengthen your spine upwardly. Then from here, shift your weight into your right hand and then take your left arm up by your left ear and reach for a beautiful left side waist, left thigh stretch. Then inhale, slowly release. And then just switch sides. Step your right knee back. Step your left foot forward. Again, let your back toes point. Blocks to the highest setting. You can obviously have your blocks lower, your hands to the floor, but it'll be much more difficult to be able to lengthen the upper body. Hips drop down and forward. Let your chest come forward and up. Again, notice my front knee is coming past my ankle. That is totally fine. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Well, sometimes it's not fine, but here it's perfectly fine. And then same thing. Just shift your weight into your left hand and then stretch your right arm up by your right ear. Try to keep your chest pointing more or less forward. If you turn your chest kind of to the right a little bit, that can compress the left side of your lower back. And then inhale, slowly release. Switch sides again, step the left knee back, right foot forward, point your back toes, hips down and forward. This is a passive lunge. This might be the only video in which I ever teach a passive lunge, so I hope you're enjoying it. Delightful. Press down. Think of Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, upward dog arms, in your um, upper body right now. If you're unfamiliar with that, don't worry about it. But biceps forward, triceps back. Now add a little bit of a pressing of the left ankle down into the floor to really get the left thigh to release. Shift your weight into your right hand, stretch your left arm by your ear like we did before. Inhale, slowly release. This time I want you to tuck your left toes under and then sit back onto your left heel. Now this is really intense on the toes but you can handle it. If it's too much on your left knee, this deep flexion of the knee, I want you to keep your hips up and forward a little bit. But if you can, sit all the way back. Take your blocks down a little bit. Come upright. Squeeze your right leg. Breathe. I don't know what this is called, but it sure is awful. Then re-bend your right knee. Switch sides. Right leg back. Left leg forward. Again, blocks back to the highest setting. Hips forward and down. Starting with the back toes pointed. Press your blocks down strongly. Turn the upper arm bones. Add a little bit of pressing of the right ankle and top of the right foot into the ground for this one. Then shift your weight into the left hand. Again, stretch your top arm past your ear, keeping the chest pointing forward. And then slowly release, tuck your back toes underneath. Again, sit down and back as far as you're able to. I have to move the blocks down a little bit. That kind of depends on the length of your arms. If you've got longer arms, you might even take the blocks down further. Flex your left foot. Now I really want you to just squeeze your left leg. Breathe. Then from here, bend your left knee, 
Move your blocks to the sides, downward facing dog. Separate your feet as wide as your mat. Bend your knees, push your chest back, push your hips back, and then re-straighten your legs. And then slowly release, come on up. All right, so we're gonna do not a restorative downward dog, but a supported downward dog. The difference is restorative is meant that you're typically not using any effort whatsoever. Supported means that you have the support of a prop, but there's still gonna be some effort. This one is ideally done against the wall, but we're gonna do it for a shorter duration without the wall. You're gonna take your block, a lot of you will have the block to the highest setting or the middle setting, some of you to the low setting. It depends on how tall you are and how open your shoulders are. So I think I'm gonna start with my block to the middle setting, lengthwise down my mat, almost at the front. Then I'm going to grab the edges of the mat like this. I can move the block back a little, I had it too far forward. Grab the edges of the mat like you're gonna rip it apart. Take your feet as wide as your mat with your knees bent, and then you'll, <laughs> I had the block way too far forward. Then you're going to move your head and chest back till your forehead is resting on the block. Now again, for some of you, you might need to have the block significantly higher for this, like this, right? If you're tighter in your hamstrings or your shoulders, adjust. This is not going to be necessarily relaxing or restorative, but I want you to be able to rest the space between and above your eyebrows on the block. You have to keep pushing the mat forward. Notice my knees are bent. Well, you probably can't see. Keep the knees bent. Push, push, push with the block. I'm sorry, with the hands. Now start to straighten the legs a little bit, keeping the head where it is. The main work in this variation is pushing the arms, pushing the mat with the hands forward, letting the head rest. Again, you might need to keep your knees bent the entire time. Breathe. And then very slowly lift your head, put your knees down on the ground, stand up on your knees for a moment, reach back, interlace your fingers, stretch the arms, and then release. All right. Now, I want you to take a wide-legged stance with your feet parallel. <clears throat> All right. Come up onto your fingertips, lengthen your chest forward, then I want you to bend your right knee and then just move your hips and your upper body to the right. Notice I'm not moving my hands. Straighten your left leg. Then bend your left knee, move your hips to the left, straighten the right leg. My upper body moves a bit, but the hands stay there. Come back to center. Bend your right knee. And then bend your left knee. One more time each side. Come back to center. You can challenge the tightness of the inner groins by keeping the hips really low as you transition side to side. Then come back to center. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come on up. Join your feet. All right. Now, similar to what we just did in our downward facing dog, we're gonna take a supported variation of wide-legged forward fold. Some of you will want both of your blocks for this. Again, a lot of this type of work when we use props, especially in a supported fashion, depends on so many variables about the length of your limbs, your upper body, your torso, uh, and your range of motion. So I'm gonna show you there's a couple of different ways in which you can kind of work this. My friends who are a little bit, um, tighter in their hamstrings, and that's most of us. You can take both blocks, actually. You can take one block 
to the lowest setting, one block to the highest setting like this. Bend your knees and just rest your forehead here. My friends who are a little bit more flexible, you can take the block down to the lowest setting and either come onto the forehead or even onto the top of the head. So whereas when we did downward dog, we were trying to mainly get it to the forehead. If you're more flexible, you can try to get the top of the head down to the block or to the floor for some of you, but I'm just not that flexible on my hamstrings. So I want you to take a moment, play around with your props, make sure your neck's comfortable, make sure your head's comfortable. And then once you're there, we're gonna hold it for about a minute. And again, this is work. It's not passive. Make sure your feet haven't turned out. And again, you can keep your knees bent the entire time. You can hold onto your ankles or your shins. You can walk your hands back, relax your forearms down. I want you to just play with it a little bit. Some of the weight is in your head. Most of the weight is in your feet and your legs. Unlike most Prasaritas, this is what this pose is, Prasarita Padatanasana, your legs are going to be relaxed. Breathe. And then inhale very slowly, go ahead, lengthen, bring your feet a little closer together, and stand up. Whew. Okay, now we're going to do one more just like that. This one's going to be the most intense in terms of range of motion in the hips and the spine. So you may actually end up wanting to go back to the one we just did. Otherwise, I need to use uh, two blocks for this for sure. There's a couple of you in that there that might just use one. So we're gonna do kind of a supported Uttanasana, which is a wide legged, or uh, just a, a standard forward bend. And again, I have to kind of make, <laughs> I kind of have to make a, a, a very creative height for where my body is. I want you to have your feet a little bit wider than the mat knees bent. Now, for me, I can really just get my forehead to the blocks. Again, there's a lot of you out there who are more flexible. You might be able to adjust the blocks so that, again, that you're on top of the head. Some of you might need to just come out. You're like, your head's two feet away from the blocks, even at the very highest setting, and go back to the one that we just did. But again, I want you to let your head relax, your legs relax, and then just kind of let gravity lengthen the spine, lengthen the back of your hamstrings.
And from here, go ahead, slowly move your blocks off to the sides. Come down gently onto hands and knees. Then just for a moment, step your right foot forward into a lunge again. Twist your right arm up to the sky. You may need a block for this as well. This is a counter stretch for the forward bends we just did. I want you to reach back and hold your left foot with your right hand. Take a thigh stretch. Turn and roll your chest up. And then slowly release. Switch sides, left leg forward, right leg back. If you're unable to grab the foot, you just take your bottom hand, put it up on a block. If you still can't hold your foot, you just twist without grabbing the foot. Oftentimes our, our backs feel tight after holding forward bends like that because of how the hip flexors grip and overwork. So this will help to counter that for many of you. And go ahead, slowly come on out. What am I doing on that? Okay, perfect. Now, from here, let's grab both of our blocks again. <clears throat> Take your blocks, place them at the middle setting. The first block is going to go perpendicular to your spine across the shoulder blades, the middle to bottom tips of your shoulder blades in that general vicinity. The other block is going to go right behind your skull. So when I lie back, the first block should lift the chest, but not your upper shoulders. So if it's pulling your upper arms like this, then it's too high up. You should be able to relax the upper arms back and down as you lie back. So a nice supported back bend. I had mine a little bit too low. So from here, if this is too intense, you take both blocks to the lower setting, you still get a lot done. You can have your legs straight. Personally, my favorite leg position when you're doing kind of a, a more passive practice, a more passive active back, passive uh, supported back bend like this, is to bend the knees and not bring the feet together, knees apart, not that variation. Don't do that one yet. You cross your shins, so crisscross applesauce, like you were sitting at the beginning of class. I like the way that just lets the hip flexors breathe. Or you can have the legs straight or just knees bent and feet on the ground. Then if you have your legs crossed like mine, you just switch the cross of your leg. And from here, bend your knees, put your feet on the ground, and then just very slowly, using the strength of your core, sit up. So now we're going to end with a combined restorative pose and some basic breathing exercises. Normally, you wouldn't do pranayama in a more reclined position, but for a lot of people it's really difficult to find the posture while seated upright to be able to breathe effectively, um, especially for a longer period of time. 
So let me show you the setup. We're going to do Supta Baddha Konasana, which is kind of the, the, the mother of all restorative poses. If you have a favorite variation you like to do at home, um, please do so. I prefer the one, or at least a variation that has more of a lifted chest element. So you're going to take your bolster. If you don't have a bolster at home, you can, I don't know, you guys have been really creative with your prop use and the emails you've sent me. You can figure it out. I have faith in you. So then I take my block underneath about two thirds of the way up the bolster like that. Now to support the hips, you're going to use a blanket. Some of you know how to use a strap to support the ankles. I like to use a blanket. I think I said at the beginning of class, you may or may not need one, and now you're rolling your eyes, and you're like, oh, he lied to me, that bastard. <laughs> Sorry. You're going to unroll your blanket and then roll it up so that you have kind of a longer, thinner noodle than like a super thick, short roll. So then I sit directly in front of the bolster with my hips, with my feet together, knees apart. And I'm just going to turn towards you for a second so that you can see what the blanket's going to do. The blanket goes around the front of the ankles and then underneath like that so that it's supporting underneath the shins. And this is really important to have a little bit of support underneath your shins and ankles in this pose and knees to make it not super intense. So I'm going to lie down. Hips are again right up against the edge of the bolster. Blanket goes around the front of the ankles and then ties behind. And then as I lie back, like I've been saying all class long, you might need to adjust depending on the length of your spine. Um, the height of the block might be too high, might be too low. If you feel any pinch in it in your lower back, check to make sure that your hips aren't too far uh, aren't too far away from the bolster. I'm sorry, too close to the bolster. You can scoot your butt down away from the bolster a little bit to lengthen your lower back. Then let your arms rest out to the side. Rest your shoulders onto your back so that there's a slight sense of a back arch. Kind of like what we just did in the last pose. Not intense, but there should be an openness across the chest. And then a very slight tuck of the chin. Then again, what you're aiming for with the hips is a little sensation of the stretch of the inner thighs, but it shouldn't be overbearing and incredibly intense. Arms out to the side. Then I want you to, before we move into any breathing, just take a few moments to relax into the pose. Make any adjustments you need. Do whatever you have to do to be able to find a sense of resting inward, resting downward into your body, into the pose. Maybe make the adjustment so that your back feels better, your hips feel better. And if you're congested at home, I want you to breathe and do the breathing exercises through your mouth. If you're not congested, I want you to try to do all the breathing in and out of the nose. We're not going to do anything complicated, nothing too intense, just a nice couple minutes of counted breathing. If at any point the counts become too long, then you go back to the lesser count, the count before. So if seven is too much, you go back to five. Pranayama or breathing should never feel like you're having to gasp for air or hold your breath or strain your breath. So 
So go ahead, just take a full breath in through your nose first. And a long exhale out. Now inhale for a count of five, four, three, two, one. And exhale for five, four, three, two, one. Same as before, inhale, five, four, three, two, one. And exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Again, inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. One. Now just take a normal breath in through your nose and a soft exhale out. Now we're going to do another round and what I want you to start to pay attention towards is if you're breathing in one area of your torso only. Try to draw the inhale slowly from the belly up through the ribs, through the chest, and then back from the chest down through the ribs, into the belly. So again, first a normal inhale, a gentle exhale out, and now inhale for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and exhale seven, six, five, four, three, two, Inhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Two more. Inhale, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now just take a soft inhale and a soft exhale. Let the breath return to its natural state. Relax your jaw, your ears, your throat. Also relax the space between and above your eyebrows. Now I know there's a good chance many of you want to stay here forever, but I want you to gently draw your knees towards each other. Gently stretch your legs out and come into Shavasana with your bolster underneath your knees. Feet on the ground and arms out to the side. 
I'm going to put the blanket behind my head for a nice added touch. And then just slowly bring your awareness back to the space that you're in. Begin to make any small movements that you like. And slowly bend one knee at a time and roll over onto your side. Gently press yourself up to seated. So I hope you found that short sequence of restorative supported poses refreshing and relaxing. That was the aim. You can go to my other videos if you want something more intense, strength building, etc. Um, especially right now, since so many people are severely affected financially by what's going on. Um, please enjoy my videos for free. If you are not affected financially by the ongoing pandemic and you can afford to make a small donation, um, I would very much appreciate that. If, uh, oh, the description payments is always, uh, the pay. I'm very out of it after that class. The directions for payment are in the description for the video below. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out. Otherwise, I uh, hope you're healthy and well. Bye.